Hello. Hi, Molly. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you, Krista? I'm doing wonderful. Excited to be back doing another video for Menstruation Moms. This week we are going to be talking about female anatomy basics. So exciting. Um, I feel like a lot of us kind of missed out on this. Um, in our childhood, I feel like there's a lot of misinformation floating out there. So we're just going to kind of go over the basics of fe female anatomy today and kind of go from there. So should we get started? We should. Let's so, do it. The first thing that we're going to talk about is um, what's going to happen up top. So your skin and your hair are going to start to change. Um, as your hormones change, you might notice that your skin is a little more oily or you have some dry spots. Um, so making sure that you're washing your face really well is something that you can do to help that. Mm -hmm. um, another thing with skin changes, um, you may experience a little bit of acne or pimples. Um, that doesn't usually start right away with puberty, but certainly does happen into the teenage years. Um, the official stance on pimples is don't pick. Don't pick. Don't pick. It's tempting. It's so tempting. Um, ask your parents, get you some good pimple cream. Leave them alone. It's mm. hard. <laughs> wash your face. And wash, wash your it face. Often. Yep. Uh, Sunscreen. Yep. Always good. From mm. the from summertime is coming up. Wear your sunscreen. Keep your skin protected. It's your skin you've got your whole life. <laughs> So the next thing that we're going to talk about with your hormones changing is that you may realize you've got some new hair growth. Where you might grow it is in your armpits, on your pubic area. Um, sometimes you start to get it on top of your lip maybe, under your chin, your eyebrows might get more fluffy, but these are all normal changes for um, women and, and men. Um, so it's just something that's going to happen. Yeah, um, I just want to point out that all families handle body hair a little differently. Um, some women like to shave or wax or remove body hair. Other women choose to leave body hair. It is your body and you get to choose what you do with that hair. You can always talk to a trusted grown up in your life if you want help on how to do hair removal if that's something you choose to do. I highly recommend having a tutorial YouTube video. We can maybe even go over it sometime, the basics of shaving so you don't hurt yourself. So. Um, let's move on. We've got body hair pretty well covered. Um, hygiene, keeping clean. Um, when puberty begins and hormones start flowing, usually sweat glands are going to become active and you will notice that your armpits are more sweaty. Different parts of your body might be a little more sweaty. Um, more frequent showering is usually appropriate starting around puberty. Um, I don't know, you can talk with the grown-ups in your life about what is appropriate for you and how often you should shower. Um, usually a couple times a week would be a pretty good place to start. And deodorant. Deodorant is if also- If you choose to wear it. Yeah, um, so many choices of deodorant. You can take your grown-up to the store, look at all the different options, um, pick a scent that you really enjoy, and um, find something that that is working for you. There's tons of different options. So if it's not working and you're still sweating and gross or feel yucky, um, there's other options to try. Yep. We are now going to talk about genitalia. What's down below? Specifically female genitalia. We'll talk about gentlemen, boys, genitals another day. Today we're just talking about female genitalia. We have another little book to help us talk. This is called Period. It's a revised edition by Joanne Gardner Luann, Bonnie Lopez, Marsha Quackenbush. I kind of wonder if her husband writes books too, because we have a Quackenbush book at our house about Henry the Duck. Mm. It's possible. Okay. Probably not a very common last name. So, all the, all the way in the back is where we're going. Here we go. Molly, you want to talk a little bit about what we got here? This is your uterus begins here with your ovary, which is where your eggs are at birth. It will, fall, it will pop an egg and go down your fallopian tube into your uterus, where it will then go out with your period. 
amazing. This is a cartoon of your uterus. It's not going to look quite exactly like this, but this does a really good example of kind of showing you the basic anatomy and how those parts work. Um, just for a little bit of size reference, we have got a couple almonds here, um, a full adult woman's uh, ovaries are about the size of an almond. So you have two ovaries in your body if you're born a female, and both of those as an adult will be about the size of an almond. As Molly mentioned, all of your eggs are already present at birth. Magic, you're born with all your eggs, you don't need to make any new ones. And with each menstrual cycle, one of those eggs is released from the ovary and does come out with your period. And we're gonna go into a lot more detail. The cycle has a lot of different elements to it, but that is the very basics of it. Um, at the end of that cycle, the period results in bleeding and then the cycle begins again. Anything else you wanna add on this, Molly? Oh, uh, uterus size. Just a sense of how big your uterus is. Um, typically, it's about the size of your fist. So make a fist. And that is how big your uterus is, approximately. Obviously, when women go through pregnancy, uterus size changes greatly. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but for most of us, our uterus is about fist size. And we've got those lovely almond size ovaries and fallopian tubes are fairly small as well. So we've got all these complex parts that are actually pretty small working within our body and doing pretty amazing stuff. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about breast development. We've got a little book here by Linda Madaris and Aria Madaris called My Body, Myself for Girls. Um, we're just going to show a couple little things that we've got in here today. Here we have a lovely example of breast development. We've got starting from pre-puberty with some breast buds and developing. Everyone's breast development is going to be a little bit different. It is very typical for one breast to develop a little earlier than the other breast. So if that is something that happens, do not be terribly concerned. We are going to delve more into breast development at another time when we have um, a wonderful guest with us who's an IBCLC to join us. But um, I think typical for breast development is some tenderness. Um, nipples can be pretty sensitive, changing in color, shape, size, all of that fun stuff. So um, a lot of young women choose to wear bras when their breasts start developing. Um, something stretchy and comfortable is always a good place to start and um, whatever's comfortable on your body. Hi, just a quick heads up that this next segment of the video does have a graphic drawing of female genitalia. We are showing all the parts. If that's something you're not comfortable with, you are welcome to skip this section. Thank you. Next, we are going to talk about the vulva. We have got the women's genitalia here. You can see in the bottom picture on the right, that is a woman laying on the floor and the circle is showing what's going on in there. We can kind of start at the top and work our way down. We have the mons, which is the fat pad region that has pubic hair. We can move down a little bit. We've got outer lips and inner lips of the vulva. We have got the clitoris right at the top. Down a little further, we have the urinary opening or urethra. That is where your pee comes out. Down a little further, we have the vagina or vaginal opening. This is where your period comes out. Down a little lower, we have the anus. This is where your poop or BMs come out. And that, my friends, is a summary of the female genitals. Hi, welcome to our question and answer segment. Um, one question that we got and that we have asked and got some interesting replies was, how much blood will I lose during my period? So again, in our period book, they have a very good description. It says, the amount of blood varies from girl to girl, especially during the first couple of years of menstruation. A girl may lose as little as one tablespoon of blood or up to six tablespoons in each cycle. The blood doesn't come out all at once. It dribbles and drips out, and a menstrual period may last from two to eight days. Some girls lose more blood on the first day and less on the following days. Some girls more on the second day. That The way each girl menstruates is different. So that's saying it's not a terrible amount of blood, um, and it will come out slowly over a course of anywhere from two to eight days. 
Wonderful. Thank you for joining us this time while we chatted about female anatomy. Please make sure to join us next time while we talk about breasts, breast development, and functionality of breasts. We are going to have a special guest with us who is an IBCLC, and she will chat with us about all things breasts. If you have any questions, you can email them to us, menstruationmoms at gmail.com, or be sure to subscribe and like below. Thank you. We'll see you next time.